Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the first video in IB Physics Topic 3, Thermal Physics, where we will be looking at internal energy, phases of matter, ideal gases, and phase changes. Objects have many energies, but in thermal physics we focus on an object's internal energy. This is defined as the total energy of all particles in an object, measured in joules. The IB expects you to know that this is the sum of the intermolecular potential energy, how loosely spaced particles are, and the random kinetic energy of the particles, how quickly the particles are moving. These components are important when defining the different phases of matter. This is because each phase is described according to the kinetic theory, which looks at how particles in each phase move in relation to one another. The three phases are solid, liquid or gaseous. Solids can be defined as having a fixed volume and a fixed shape, and as such, they do not fill the shape of a container. The particles within solids vibrate around a fixed position, due to strong intermolecular forces between the particles. Thus, solid particles have a low internal energy. Liquids can be defined as having a fixed volume, but a variable shape, and as such, they do fill the shape of a container. The particles slide over one another due to weak intermolecular forces between the particles. Thus, liquid particles have a higher internal energy than solid particles. Gases can be defined as having no fixed volume and a variable shape, and, as such, they also fill the shape of a container. The particles move randomly in space due to very weak intermolecular forces between the particles. Thus, gas particles have the highest internal energy of all three phases of matter. As you can see, the internal energy of a material is dependent on the intermolecular potential and kinetic energy of its particles. However, there is a theoretical exception to this rule. This is covered on your syllabus as the concept of ideal gases. Ideal gases are theoretical gases where the volume of each molecule is considered zero. There are no forces between molecules, and all molecular collisions are perfectly elastic. Since there are no intermolecular bonds, the internal energy of an ideal gas is solely dependent on, and equal to, the total random kinetic energy of its particles. Gases are usually described in terms of their pressure, temperature and volume. However, ideal gas particles have no volume, and so the volume of an ideal gas at any given temperature and pressure depends purely on the number of particles present, not the nature or the properties of the gas itself. This number of particles is measured in moles, which is just a complicated way to say a number. Just like a million is equal to 1000000, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. This is known as Avogadro's number. So, the related equation that arises is the number of moles of a gas equals the number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. By extension, molar mass of a substance is the mass of one mole of any substance. It is measured in grams per mole and can therefore be calculated using the equation mass divided by moles. The important concept to get your head around is that moles are simply just numbers. If you have one mole of apples, you will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 apples. If you had one mole of water, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. However, since there are three atoms in each molecule of H2O, you would have three times this many atoms, i.e. 1.806 times 10 to the 24. From this, it was determined that an ideal gas will always occupy a volume of 22.7 decimeters cubed per mole at standard temperature and pressure, which is 273 Kelvin and 100,000 pascals, or 100 kilopascals. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.